For these nights of Holy Week, our theme is costly discipleship. We know that Christians all over the world face hardship and persecution for their faith in Christ. And although here in Britain we don't face anything like that, nevertheless we'll know that our discipleship is costly because it's misunderstood. We do things differently than others. We sometimes stand out for the sake of Christ and others may not understand us. The friends of Jesus, who spent particularly this last week with him, were finding out exactly what would be the cost of discipleship as they followed him on his final journey. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And we call to mind the day now drawing to a close and all that to which we turn to God. Praying together, Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we failed to do. Forgive us our sins Heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Together we sing before the ending of the day. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that with thy wonted favour thou wouldst be our God and keep her now. From all ill dreams defend our eyes, from nightly fears and fantasies, Tread underfoot a ghostly foe that no pollution we may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, thine only Son, who with the Holy Ghost and thee doth live and reign eternally. The reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, beginning to read at the 21st verse. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that, because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So, after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Here ends the reading. 
and Psalm 4 say it antiphonally. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you nobles dishonor my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But know that the Lord has shown me his marvelous kindness. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, Lord, only who make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. On Monday evening, we thought about the cost of discipleship for Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, about the extravagant gift of the perfume she used to anoint Jesus' feet, of her extravagance in wiping them with her hair let loose in grief. Last night, we thought about the cost of discipleship for Judas, who gave up far too early because of his fear and disappointment. And whenever we think of Judas, we need always remember that he, like Mary, was Jesus' friend. We considered the cost of discipleship for those who wanted to see Jesus and his glory. That glory would lead to pain and suffering, to burial in order for transformation. Jesus continues tonight deeply distressed. He's fixed his eyes on his death, and his friends were divided about how to interpret this distress and how it should be addressed. Some, like Peter, either tried to stop him talking about it, or if he wouldn't stop such talk, then they insisted that whatever he was doing, they could follow him. Others misunderstood what Jesus meant completely and demanded that the glory for which they thought he was headed should be shared between them. Jesus told them that they'd all misunderstood. It was going to be much more costly than simply following or stepping up to a heavenly podium. This may be a familiar story to us. Today's Christians have four different Gospels. We have the witness of the church throughout thousands of years. But these people at supper with Jesus had none of that. And they were on their own. Even their faith tradition wasn't providing them much comfort. They were growing bereft. We heard again about Jesus' last meal with them. They reclined at table which wasn't the best way to listen to the conversations of fellow diners laying on the chest of the person on your left. This gospel's an ordinary meal, not the Passover, and nothing really out of the ordinary for any of them except for Jesus. And suddenly the conversation stopped as one by one Jesus' companions heard him say, One of you will betray me. Which is it? asked the person on Jesus' left. To this friend alone, Jesus says, it's the one to whom I'm going to give this piece of bread. To do this, Jesus had to get up and walk around the table. This was such a costly thing for Jesus to do. For he told that person, Judas, quickly, do what you're going to do. What was the cost for Judas of this action of Jesus? No one knew why Jesus had said this to Judas. 
and we'll continue to hear later in the narrative that Jesus calls Judas friend. The closer the relationship, the more severe the betrayal. Judas and Jesus were friends, and all friends have the potential to betray. Their friendship with Jesus presented all his friends with a dilemma, and each of the men fell at a crucial fence. Only the women stayed the distance. We remember Judas because his was the first betrayal, the one which made the others possible. If Jesus hadn't been arrested, then there would have been no reason for Jesus' friends to run away. No reason for Peter to instantly deny that he even knew him. Judas's betrayal was part of the path to Jesus' justification. Judas's friendship with Jesus cost Judas his life, but he didn't cause Jesus' death. Judas's friendship with Jesus asked of Judas what he couldn't give. There's nothing in the Gospels which tells us that Jesus condemned or was even angry with Judas, only that he called him friend. I always wonder whether Judas and Peter were both in Jesus' mind when he prayed from his cross, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. We each, like Judas, bear the cost of being Jesus' disciples. As we continue our journey with Jesus this holy week, may God make us humble as we remember that it's only from a place of friendship that betrayal is possible. And may we seek to see others as Jesus does, as friends, and uphold that friendship through our service. For Jesus calls us, you and me, his friends. Amen. Our Responsory Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace, Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. As we turn to the Lord God in prayer, we call to mind this day now drawing to a close, all our thanksgivings and our concerns for ourselves, our world, and for those whom we love. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. 
May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour's taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus. For the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen.